Welcome to the Travel Plus Loyalty Monday Morning Update. Your host this morning is Henrik Olsen. In our Monday Morning Update, we'll give you a short update on what is the recent and most important news. We will also have a theme where we'll deep dive into, together with a guest. Today the theme is China's new competitor to Boeing and Airbus, the Comac C919. A new plane produced in China and will compete directly to Boeing's 737 MAX and Airbus 320 Neo. Our guest is the former SAS pilot Bjorn Lundström, who has shared his work to his over 200,000 followers on YouTube and Instagram. You can find him under his social media name Bjorn Pilot. But first, let's get started with today's show. First, a news update. SAS held an online meeting with the most loyal customers who have your bonus diamond or pension status. Not much news came from that meeting, but one thing was shared. SAS will until June give four times the earnings of status points and flight segments. On the surface, a good offer, but in reality more difficult to use for many. Norwegians are probably the ones who have the best chance and possibilities to use it due to their active domestic market. Norwegian are in the middle of a restructuring to the new Norwegian. Last week they announced that the customers that they still need to repay for tickets is not going to get their money. It's about 34,000 customers and mainly customers outside Norway. It's due to the fact that the Irish examiner and the Norwegians likewise have said that the customers have the same right as other creditors. Norwegian hoped to get its plan of restructuring approved this week. We also may see an all-new, all-premium airline in Europe. Prague USA.1 is saying they will start flying from Prague and Dubrovnik in June. They have ordered four Airbus A350s, but they will start with a wet lease of two A330s and two A350s. All seat will be on their own planes will be premium economy, which makes this new airline a very interesting one. We look forward to see and hear more from them when they are getting closer to June. Last week on March 11th, we did cross the one-year day from when Denmark was closed down. Most other countries did the same just before or after that date. We still are closed down, and even Norway may continue to be closed down in fear of a third wave. We have seen dramatic decreases in traffic numbers. Copenhagen Airport are down with 95% in 2020 compared to 2019. Similar numbers are across the larger airports in Europe. This was the news update this morning, and now let's look into this Monday morning theme. China have built a direct competition for the Boeing 737 MAX and the Airbus A320 Neo. It's called the Comac C919. This new, never bodied yet, of the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC, will gain its airworthiness approval by the end of 2021, and China Eastern Airlines are the launch customer. The C919 is designed to have 158 seats in two classes, but can have up to 174 seats in a one-class high-density configuration. When the C919 goes into service, Boeing and Airbus could soon face a real competition on the very lucrative Chinese short-haul market, a market that in 2035 will have 1.5 billion travelers in transit or within China. China is already now the second biggest market for Boeing after their home market in US. When Boeing presented its commercial market outlook for 2020 through 2039, they estimated that Chinese carriers would need new planes for a total value of 1.4 trillion US dollars in that period. Both Boeing and Airbus, they have facilities in China to assemble or finalize airplanes. The plane is Chinese produced. The fuselage and main structures are produced and developed in China. But there is a lot of centrally components that are coming from Western companies. The engine is coming from the French-American corporation CFM and is called the Leap 1C. It is a version of that similar engine that is used on Boeing 737 MAX and on Airbus 320 Neos. Also, the cockpit are from US manufacturer Ethan, avionics are from Rockwell Collins and Honeywell, the landing gear is also from Honeywell and tires are from Michelin. The list goes on. So it is not a 100% Chinese plane when we settle the score. 
Also, there has been a lot of rumors of industrial espionage during the development of the C919. The C919 flight deck features a size deck control like the one you see in the H310 News. All other instruments are on large display screens spread over the cockpit. The Chinese have not done this alone. There have been a joint cooperation between Bombardier Aviation and Comac, which also have helped giving them the expertise into the project and design phase. The timeline is that Comac was founded in 2008. The first plane rolled out of the Shanghai factory in 2015. In 2017, in April, the first taxi and brake test were done. In May 2017, the first flight took place. In December 2017, the second prototype took its first flight. In December 2019, the fourth prototype took its first flight, and in November 2020, the Chinese authorities gave the C919 its type inspection authorization. One of the main places where the C919 can potentially compete is price. Most estimates put its price per unit cost at around 50 million US dollars, about half the price of both A320 News and about 60% cheaper than the MAX 8. The company says that it has passed the 1000 mark for C919 orders from 28 airlines and aircraft leasing companies. Almost all of them are Chinese owned. The airlines include Chinese Eastern, Air China, Hainan and China Southern. Outside China, only Connecticut-based GE Capital has signed a letter of intent to purchase 20 C919s. This may be a part of a larger deal as GE is supplying the CFM Leap engines to the plane. Airlines in neighboring countries like Myanmar and Laos could also be buyers. Orders could also come from Indonesia and for some countries in Africa, a continent where China have been heavily investing for years to extend its soft power. Even Ryanair has showed interest in a 200-seat version, mainly because of the lower price tag, which makes the margin better than a fleet of Boeing aircraft. Now we have the ground covered, but what about flying it? What about the safety? Let's invite our good friend Björn Lundström in the studio and hear what he has to say about that. And now in the studio we have uh, Björn Lundström, uh, A350 pilot and uh, big YouTube and Instagram profile uh, with, the, with the name Björn Pilot. And then he will uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, the new Chinese uh, competition uh, to Boeing and Airbus, the Comac C919. Welcome, Björn. Thank you, Henrik. Nice to be with you again. Thank you, and good to have you. Björn, you have been spending the last uh, last couple of weeks flying electric airplanes. Um, how is that flying an electric airplane compared to, uh, to flying a, a big uh, conventional airplane? A uh, very, very nice uh, experience, uh, and similar to to the same size uh, piston engine planes, but even easier to fly because less things to do. You don't have to uh, change fuel tanks or put on the carburetor heat or so, and the throttle response is immediate on a on an electric plane. So a very nice experience. Should be a fine plane for pilot training, I think. Oh, and that's uh, that's really, really good uh, insight because that's also about the topic of uh, of today where we have uh, China who uh, now have, uh, over the last uh, 10 to 12 years, have trying to build a new uh, commercial airline, uh, no, airplane, uh, the Comac uh, C919. So that's also a brand new plane like electric plane are. So... So a little bit about the the Comac, um, the 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 Comac name. Uh, if you don't know it, Bjorn, it's it stands for Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's it's really a Chinese company or Chinese owned company that that builds this uh, this new airplane. And um, what what we want to to talk about is is a little bit about when when from a pilot point of view and and the experience you have uh, from from your uh, thirty six years in in SAS. What when a new airplane type model is built uh, and, and, and has crossed its it, it main testing phases. Uh, from a pilot point of view, what is your experience in, in, in getting these, uh, uh, getting to start flying a new airplane type? 
Uh, yes, first we have the, the very long and intense certification process. And the, this process is, of course, uh, uh, observed by the customers, potential customers. And it's, it's impossible not to, to uh, compare to the Boeing 737 MAX certification process in this. And I'm sure that uh, other airline uh, airplane com, uh, producers, they, they look at what happened to the 737 MAX and the, the things they did wrong there. And uh, this should be a thorough process. Mm. But, but let's... let's... Stick a little bit uh, about the, the the 737 Max and 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 some of the issues there because it, it's clearly that the certification phase there uh, probably not has been as good uh, as as it should be and uh, and Boeing have self certified uh, quite a lot compared to the to the FAA and 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 so forth but but these things that happens there what have what what do you think we have learned from the 737 Max? Uh, uh, Accidents and also the recertification of that. Is this something we uh, we will change the certification of, of new air aircrafts? Yeah, absolutely. I think that if uh, someone uh, think thinks that there there are some problems with the plane, you have to take that really seriously. That's a that's a main lesson, and uh, that obviously. It, this this process wasn't uh, optimal optimal in in um, this uh, 737 Max certification process, but probably the Chinese uh, agencies and the Chinese producer they watch what went wrong for for the 737 Max and they won't do the same mistake. Probably, they, possibly they they can make other mistakes. You don't know that. There's always possibility for the mistakes. But uh, since it's a new producer and a new plane, I think they will be very, very careful. Mm. And also, the, the, the main idea which, uh, which I made in the introduction uh, to, to this podcast is that, that, that China is building this airplane to, to, to get rid of the, let's say, the, the, the competitioners of Boeing and Airbus in China. They, they want to, of course... Uh, have their own uh, airlines, uh, which are also uh, mainly uh, state-controlled, uh, flying Chinese airplanes, of course. Uh, Boeing, uh, Boeing's biggest market outside the U.S. is China, and, and they have also, like, Airbus uh, production facilities there. So, so of course, they want to, to try to, um, to make an airplane type that they can use domestically in China and having a larger footprint than uh, Airbus and Boeing have now. Uh, so so it, it, from an, they, they, they can't afford to fail, uh, I hear you say, so, no. so, do they only have this one chance to 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 make this uh, this a success, or, or or what? Do what, how do you see that? Yeah, and the, this is the only chance because it's only one project, so they can't afford to build several planes and uh, let some some of them get uh, become successes and the other ones fail. So this must be a, a success. And uh, I can see clearly see that they want to share of this market in China because the, the Chinese market is really really good border also for for uh, airplane producers and also for for airlines. Mm. Yeah, I think there are like like eight or nine bigger uh, Chinese airlines, and um, most of them is is some some way, shape, or form owned by the government. So they have a, a large footprint there, and and they also want to to expand that. I think um, the market in China is uh, in, estimated in two thousand and thirty five to be one and a half billion travelers that goes via China or within China. So it it requires quite a lot of uh, airplanes uh, to to keep that demand up. Uh, so, so if you go back to a little bit of saying that that um, looking at the seven three seven Max and and how it has been recertified, it it must have, I think the seven three seven Max is the most tested aircraft type uh, that I have ever seen in the history. Uh, would you, you agree on that or how? Uh... Yeah, now it is. Yeah, it, now it is maybe yeah. it wasn't before, and yeah. they maybe they took some shortcuts before, but now now. They really don't. Yeah. They, they can't afford a second failure. Then uh, Boeing would go down yeah. as a company. They can't afford yeah. it. Um, and that's also uh, interesting, again, on, on how we have seen the, the, the C919 is being built. Because if you look at the, the, the components uh, on, on, uh, on, 
on the on the aircraft. Uh, the aircraft itself, so the, the the fuselage and so forth, is built in China, but but they have a lot of components from Western manufacturers like like engines. It comes from uh, CFM, the the U.S. French Corporation, uh, and it's a version of the the same engine that is on the Airbus uh, 320 Neo and uh, the the 737 Max. Uh, so. Also, the cockpit is is coming from a U.S. manufacturer uh, on that part. What do you think that that means for the uh, for the new aircraft? Is that more a chance of success or, uh, than than using it or building it themselves in China? Yeah, it's a big uh, economical aspect on the on that because it would be not very efficient to develop own engines and own avionics. So that's a that increase the chance for success for the for the, this uh, airplane. Mm -hmm. So, so when you see a, an 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 aircraft, we we shared the the overview and have talked about that a little bit in 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 in, in before this podcast. I would say that that we have all the uh, cockpit things come from from Eaton in in US. Uh, all the electric systems come from from Honeywell. The engines is from CFM. Tires from Michelin, uh, and and uh, I think also the the APU is also from Honeywell uh, yeah. on on that part. So we have the the engine is from CFM. It's a fuel efficient engine, uh, and and also the the, the aircraft is built uh, on on the scale to be fuel efficient as well. So so a success from China here is that it is a Chinese aircraft uh, because the the airframe is is built uh, by 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 China and 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 Comic here. Uh, so. So would that make it easier to be successful that they actually reuse a lot of the components that Boeing and, and Airbus uh, have uh, been using and testing for a long time? Yes, it is, both for reliability reasons, but also for uh, uh, economical reasons. It, it increases the chances for success. The only problem uh, I can see, potential problem, is that the interactions between the system, the interactions between the CFM engine and the Chinese plane, and mm. that that's a potential uh, uh, problem. But hopefully, they they will solve it. Mm. Mm. So, so current state of of the development is that the Chinese uh, authorities uh, they have approved the the aircraft uh, or giving it type certification. So, so now they are not allowed to to do any changes on the design. Uh, mm. uh, now the the final test is not coming, and they have been having this uh, uh, minus degree testing as well, and they need a couple of more testing. I think one of the things they need is is a, a de icing test uh, and a trip to to Canada. To, to do okay. uh, something like that and, and due to the covid this is a little bit uh, tricky to uh, to send the plane up there so it can be a little bit delayed on on, on that part or, uh, but we'll see the, the goal is still that that we'll see um, uh, China Eastern Airlines having the the first uh, planes uh, flying out of Shanghai uh, in in sometimes uh, during this year that's uh, yeah. at least how they they see it so if you're coming into this uh, new aircraft um, as a pilot um, and you're being told uh, now uh, you're flying uh, uh, this model, uh, for example, Airbus, uh, and, and now you are going to, to fly this uh, C919. What, what is the training that you, that you start up with? Uh, is it just uh, on an iPad or how much training goes into actually changing uh, completely from one aircraft into a completely different aircraft and model and manufacture from a pilot point of view? Uh, it depends very much on how different it, the plane is for the pilot compared to other planes that the, this pilot has uh, flown before. For example, for from Airbus 330 to Airbus 350 is a shorter course than if you come from a Boeing 737 and start to fly an Airbus 350. You need a completely different course. And uh, I don't know exactly the similarities between Airbus and this Chinese plane. Maybe they are very similar in the presentation for the pilots. That mm. would ease the transition course. Mm. But before before you go to pilot training, the company has has uh, looked very carefully on this, how much training new pilots need before they start flying mm. the Chinese plane. So, so the manufacturer and and the airline they will set up some kind of uh, training uh, probably ma yes material yeah. and say this is Most the, likely, yeah. this is the con uh, this is how we convert from from airbus and over to this uh, new model yeah and 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 
these are the courses, these are the training steps. Uh, and I assume also the uh, the uh, authorities, so so like FAA or or, or the European uh, authorities, they will also have some kind of uh, um, in, in input to how this is is certified, I guess. Yeah. How what how much training a pilot needs, or is it completely yeah. something that the manufacturer does alone? No, the the agent, the officials, they have to approve the training program mm. to see that it's it's relevant for for uh, the new pilot, co- considering his or her previous experience. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so if we take this and and make it uh, a comparison between shifting from Airbus to Boeing or the other way around, uh, using that as an example, then. The core part of it is, of course, the same: the, the flying capabilities, but but the controls and 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 the um, avionics and and systems and so forth are, are quite different. So it, it takes uh, it takes some training. What what would be the steps there? Is that a is that a lot of simulator time, a lot of reading time, a lot of uh, courses that you do uh, on on the on the manufacturer itself? Or how uh, how was it when you changed from from yeah in the early days from the DC models and up to to the Airbus and now? Uh, your last change from the the 330, 340, and up to the H350. How was uh, how was that change? Uh, the uh, programs are basically the same, but with modern tools. Uh, you start with a technical course, the same on all new planes, and then you start with a simple simulator to train procedures, and then you d- know what the switch is maneuver when you work with a simple uh, simulator. Then you go into a more advanced and more expensive simulator, because that simulator time costs a lot more per hour. And then you, you have a longer or shorter course uh, it was uh, around six weeks from 3:30 to 3:50. But if I if I was a seven Boeing 737 pilot before, I I would need maybe two three months instead. Mm. Okay, so it's 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 a huge investment for the airlines to, to start up with this, and, and also you said the the simulator they they need to have access to yeah. simulators uh, to to be able to make that uh, transition. Yeah. Because I I didn't memorizing. <laughs> So to say all the, the the switches and buttons and screens uh, are, are, is that memorized uh, during your simulator training before you actually go into the the real aircraft uh, not really memorized but you don't uh, you don't need to know how it works by heart because mm. you can read the text on the switches mm-hmm. so you see it but you know you must know how, what the switches do yeah. behind the, at the system mm. you, you need some knowledge about it yeah so, so when you're going into to uh, to the first flight of the A350, for example, and and when you're shooting from your simulator time to to the first uh, to the first flight, um, have you have you also in the simulator been been doing a lot of uh, all these uh, emergency uh, landings and so forth that can happen, uh, or is it not something you train beforehand? Uh, no, you, you the... do that. Yeah. yeah. First, usually you start with normal procedures to get familiar with the cockpit and the mm. presentation for the pilot and you do some normal uh, approaches and takeoffs yeah. but then you immediately go into uh, emergency procedures abnormal procedures mm. to, to train uh, not exactly every procedure for every malfunction but mm. you train the the way of working with the procedures like, like in a systematic way how you generally do mm. on this plane and uh, I'm not. I don't know how the systems are designed on this Chinese plane, but they most likely have a certain logic, uh, a way of doing this. Yeah, if you look at it again, we haven't seen it from the inside, or ha- I haven't seen any pictures from the inside. But but we can see on the component list, and and that it's it's it. T- we tend to uh, assume that a lot of it is is recognizable uh, because it comes from the same vendors that that Airbus and Boeing are using uh, for, for, for their uh, Boeing uh, 737 MAX and, and Airbus 320 Neo. So so we do assume that there are some similarities, uh, at least in, 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 in some of the controls. Yeah. So, so, so if we say now the, the, the simple simulator has been, do, been done, uh, uh, all the reading and, and up to the, how the plane maneuvers and all the technical material has been done, the advanced simulator uh, have been, been done and you have done your the different uh, scenarios with, within uh, emergency and issues, then you're sitting in the plane for the first time. Uh, yeah. What what is the what what kind of uh, feeling? What kind of things do do you do? Are you extra 
uh, yeah. thorough in the in the in the in the, in the pre-flight uh, uh, setup, or, or how does that feel when when you do that for uh, the first time? Uh, it, it feels very exciting because it's the first time you are in the real thing. You will feel familiar because you have done so much training on on the CBT and in the simulator, so you you will feel at home. But you will you will feel yourself unexperienced. I, I suppose I haven't seen this cockpit of the Chinese plane, but uh, I I would guess that it looks rather much like an Airbus cockpit. I would uh, think so because the Airbus 220 is not too far away from the Airbus. 350 or 330. So mm. I, I expected to have a side stick and uh, you said the avionics and the screens. So I don't think it will be too different from an Airbus 320. It also seems what I've been, but again, it's, it's not confirmed. It seems that it has a side stick and not the the, the, the Boeing way of uh, of controlling it. So so it's, yeah. it seems that the, most likely it's designed similar ways in, in, in that aspect. But we, we we can catch up on on that on a later yeah. part, but now you're flying this uh, new aircraft uh, and and you have um, been taking it over. Then then basically I think it's it's when it comes into to uh, to hours uh, in the seat basically to get experience with a new type how it basically reacts and and how it 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 uh, behaves in different uh, scenarios. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how. I mean, the Airbus 350, it downloads the flight plan via internet and mm. this communication system. And that will be interesting to see how far the Chinese plane has uh, gone in that mm. respect. Does it really use a lot of new te- technology or still uh, with one foot behind? Mm. Interesting. What, what, yeah, what would you do if you are uh, a, a Chinese uh airplane manufacturer for the first time, would you do very much high-tech or would you do more, let's say, proven technology uh, to begin with? Uh, we have to remember that this development of this aircraft is is, is over 10 years, uh, 10 plus years. So it, it's 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 there we started with the with the main designs, basically. How would you approach it? Would you uh, would you do a first move on technology or, or a little bit more proven technology? Uh, it's, it's a difficult question. Uh... I, I would go for new technology because it's more economical. And if you want a plane to be economical, you have to go into modern technology. And then, you, but then you have the how the plane communicates with the with the environment and with the company and all that. And there, I I would of course use the modern technology. For example, now you can't really think of anyone working in today's society without internet. Mm-hmm. So of course, a plane has to work with the internet too. So, so there must be some design updates during the, uh, the ten years of yeah. development. But the, the ideas they have to begin with is that it probably is adjusted uh, over, yeah. over time to the to the more modern one, and yeah. also for you, yeah. And you have to have you you must have LCD big LCD mm. screens. The presentation must be very clear and simple yeah. for the pilot. You must have a side stick on a modern plane. The seven three seven they have a, a, a joke because of historical reasons from the seven three seven and certification uh, issues. But uh, you have to go forward and mm. have modern a modern design of the plane. Mm. That that's uh, so now we are in the plane and it's flying uh, and and that basically means that that it comes up to this uh, uh, logical question uh, what we've been talking about is this plane safe uh, would you would you fly it if you uh, got the chance to to test fly this uh, Comac C nine one hundred nineteen for 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 an airline yes of course because I have uh, uh, before I fly it I have of course of course studied the. Uh, how the certification process was done and test test flights from the manufacturer and then the, there was an acceptance flight from the airline and that's a is really a substantial work done there so then of course i would fly it but uh, it it was accepted uh, the 737 max was mm. accepted by by the customers also and there things got got wrong mm. And, and and that's of course a very uh, let's say sad story about the yeah. accident, those two two accidents, uh, and 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 the background for for those. So so you, 
again, we have seen a lot of new aircraft over the the, the last uh, ten to twenty years coming coming out. Um, and and this is, uh, I think, the interesting in this is that this is a new manufacturer. It's a new manufacturer on the market yeah. uh, that that tries to bullish them up uh, with a total new aircraft that they have designed and and, and put mm-hmm. in. But but as basically of what we've been talking about through the process uh, for the last uh, twenty minutes, it's uh, you deem it safe to fly, so you would both fly in it as 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 a pilot, but also as a passenger if you got the chance to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I think it's in, it's a new manufacturer, but it wouldn't surprise me if the Chinese producer have recruited uh, some very qualified uh, persons working mm-hmm. for them. So. Mm-hmm. Probably with experience from other producer, from Airbus or Boeing. I don't know about this, but if I was a Chinese producer, I would try to get as much qualified personnel as mm. I could. Yeah, with but experience. I, I have seen in in, in the in the documentation and, and in the cooperation that actually uh, Bombardier Aerospace, uh, they have uh, since 2012 been been part of of the development of this uh, this aircraft. So okay, so, so it's. Even though uh, the Bombardier has sold their, let's say, the main uh, um, model to to uh, to uh, okay. sold it off, then then still the the, the Bombardier Aerospace division is is still, uh, let's say, very experienced in in, in this part. Would that yeah, mean okay. that that hearing things like this, that you would say that then you're more clear? Uh, you said you will fly, but but hearing that Bombardier, for example, has been collaborating with it, would it then blue stamp it even more? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Then uh, I, I think uh, now you're talking when you tell me this, uh, and the, then because they need competence in uh, mm-hmm. in uh, those areas, and they yeah. they can they can buy it and they can uh, connect other producers like Bombardier, as mm-hmm. you told us. So, okay. so that increases the chances for success for this plane. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so a new new aircraft uh, coming into the market uh, is 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 it a one chance for China to? Uh, to succeed and being a, a, a aircraft manufacturer, or do can they can they fail this one and then build a new one and then relaunch it uh, five ten years later? Uh, they can, but it then it's going to cost them very very much money, and mm-hmm. probably the, the, the Chinese state is behind this project, so they can most likely afford it. But it, mm-hmm. then it's going it's going to cost them very much money. But I don't. I don't. I think it's it's more economical to be very careful here and make it a success from the beginning because that's much more economical uh, sound. Mm. So, so your advice to uh, would be that that don't rush it. Take the take uh, take the time to get it tested yeah. and certified and and, and absolutely. And if there is You're any, better, yeah. yeah. There's a it's an expression: better safe than sorry, mm. and then it, it has to cost some money. You have to spend some money on qualified persons, experienced persons working with this. And then you increase the chances for success. And a, a, a failure is really going to cost very much money. So not good. So uh, that's your last uh, last comment on, on, on this one. It's better safe than sorry. Yeah, and, uh, absolutely. Take, take the time needed for... Yeah. Uh, for getting this uh, ready to be uh, a commercial-driven yeah. uh, aircraft, exactly, from, uh, and that's from... the way we work. Mm. We the way we work as crew also, because if if someone has an issue, or something uh, feels that everything is not okay, mm. you your tr- a pilot is trained to to raise a warning flag mm. to say now this is not really good, and you have to take that very very seriously, just as a company culture has to be in a for an aircraft manufacturer or for an airline and that's it's a very it's company culture and pilot culture you have to follow it it also makes sense and if if china should have any uh, hope to to sell this outside china of course the trust and uh, the stability of 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 the, the plane uh, in in the in, in the cost of running it and so forth they that that has to be there so they need to earn yeah. that as as a new vendor to to bring it, for example, to 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 Africa or South America, yeah. where where China has some some big influences. Uh, it could also be that that we have actually heard that that some of the low cost carriers in Europe they they find interest in an aircraft like this because they can now think they can press Boeing 
or Airbus to get it cheaper. Uh, but but the overall cost of this aircraft uh, is is uh, supposed to be much cheaper than uh, than the current uh, uh, Boeing 737, for example, is. So it can also be interesting to see if the low cost carriers will bring this to uh, to Europe at some point. But uh, they need yeah. to approach to 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 prove it. Uh, Airworthiness and, and stability and, and cost message in, in that part. So interesting. Probably Boeing and Airbus uh, watch, are watching uh, this project carefully. I would if I were them. Yeah, of course. Again, uh, Boeing's uh, biggest market outside the US is China. So it yeah. ha- had a huge impact if uh, if they stopped buying uh, Boeing uh, or at least the, the, the short haul flight uh, flying. Uh, is, is being now produced and, and bought out of China instead of uh, of Boeing, and it will also have an impact on on the Airbus uh, and Boeing f- uh, facilities that they have in China uh, on on that part. So it's uh, I think it's a it's an interesting change, and that's also why we talked about it in yeah. in, in in this podcast episode because it is can change it uh, and and seven three seven Max accidents and uh, the issue with uh, with um, with the Boeing in, in in producing aircraft and so forth. Has also given China a chance to actually get into the market. So, uh, so it's interesting to see what's going uh, what's going to happen on this. Yeah. On, uh, on this note, Bjorn, thank you very much for uh, for joining and giving you insights on on experience on on how it is to uh, start up a new uh, aircraft model uh, as a pilot. Thank you, Henrik. We keep in touch. Thank you, definitely. Bye bye. Bye. This is the end of this Monday morning update. Thank you for listening and I wish you a good day and a good week.